Okay, so should be streaming just fine to Twitch for the first time ever, so this is probably not going to go very well, but we'll do what we can, and Twitch seems more or less okay about what's happening. We've dropped some frames maybe, and that's also going to happen, but that's why this is also being recorded, and I'll put a VOD up on YouTube as soon as I can, and then of course there's Twitch VODs as well, but... Yay! I've never done Twitch before, and this is actually sort of working decently. I tested a little bit. Anyway, there's a game. I'm replay casting the card engine qualifier. First time ever, so oh, this is probably not going to go that well, but holy shit, we'll do what we can. And sorry. I wanted to keep the stream up because I'm like, hey, let's chat if somebody actually watches this. <laughs> and then I was rudely interrupted by myself. But yes, apparently I am live, and that's great. Um. But there's Han going on here. Carnage and, Qualif and Caladavar qualifiers, round of 128. It's obviously a bunch of teams here that are not going to be very good. So ex we'll see exactly how bad they are. Hopefully really, really bad. We can all laugh together. But not me that much because I'm not very good at this game. But <laughs> it's Face, Fat Albert Can Eat versus Trash, Trash Team. And the first bands are... Kronos, Puppet Master, Ophelia, and Tempest. I think crazy interesting there. Obviously, Kronos being banned pretty consistently as a suicide option. Uh, Puppet Master as a very strong carry. And two junglers being taken out in Ophelia and Tempest, two of the stronger junglers and just heroes in general. Although Tempest has seen a fair bit of decline recently. Ophelia a little bit as well, probably because the jungle is not quite as reliable as it used to be. But uh, Tempest, really, seems to be a lot of games where he just does not get picked up at all. Anyway... Glacius is going to be the first pick here for Face, and followed up by Nymphora for the Hellborn team. They will be going, obviously, for, for supports early on in, the, in both situations. Not a huge fan of that. I like to pick up supports later in the drafts, usually when you're like, oh, okay, well, supports are important. They're really valuable in lane, which, are, which is really important, but once you get a laning phase, they're a lot less important, it feels like. It's much more critical, you know, what heroes actually got farm in the laning phase, and supports can help out a lot with that, but it still seems odd to me to pick up supports early, uh, because then that really means you've got to pick up your farmers based on which supports you have, and that seems like the backwards way to do it, but whatever. Um, also, to keep talking about Twitch here, because I've never done this, so this is a novelty, and I'm going to keep talking about it over and over again. I, I have the chat enabled, so and this is there's no delay, obviously, because it's a replay cast. So people say things in the chat, I will be able to read them, comment on them, and probably look really dumb in the process. So that'll be fun for everybody. Just a, a good time all around. And apparently, Hellborn can't pick. Or they can't pickle, at least. That'd be even worse. Pickles are delicious. <laughs> Rhapsody. Okay, I guess they go Rhapsody. So more supports here. I don't understand this really at all. Uh, both teams, Sam I guess, Brave. banning junglers and then picking supports early, which is really odd. You usually think that, oh, they ban the junglers because they want to run a jungler. But that's pretty clearly not happening because support, 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 all the way. Anyway, Sandra, the third pick. We finally have something that is not a support. Obviously a very strong combination with that Empath. Empath can jump into Sandwraith and go, Hello, we are friends now, and then Sandwraith ports somewhere on the map and hopefully gets a kill. It's a really good theory. Not sure exactly how much execution we've seen from it. That's really fantastic, but it's probably, I don't know, some execution that's been good. I just don't remember it, because, I mean, I don't know, I've seen a few Sandwraith Empath games where it's just like, I, I get what you're going for here, it's just not working, because... Empath's is a strong gank hero, but Sandwraith really isn't so much. Uh, it's great at level 6 to join a gank, but like just by yourself as Sandwraith with Empath doesn't seem to have that much gank potential. So we'll see how that does, but uh, so far, obviously 3 picks going on the Legion side. Not bad at all. I'm not a huge fan of Glacius myself in general, but Empath's a fantastic support hero, and I feel like Sandwraith is quite a strong carry. I'm not sure if I'd go with Sandwraith over, say, Moon Queen, or Draconis, or... I don't know. Forsaken Archer, maybe. There's there's a Soul Stealer. There's a lot of really good carries on the board still. Uh, Kraken is the third pick for the Hellborn team. Obviously a very versatile hero, so we'll see where he gets run. I'm suspecting it'll be in that middle lane. Then we'll see a Suicide and a Short Laner that fulfills more of a carry role. But Hell, uh, Legion, 
going for the late game here. Wretched Hag on top of the Sand Ray, so that's going to require a lot of farm. They are going to have to be able to control their resources very well. Lots of jungle stacking. I presume that's going to be a Suicide Hag. Could also be a mid Hag and run a dual lane top. 2-1-2 two, two type pub star lanes. Very possible. Um, but the bans real quick are Bubbles, Plague Rider, and Balfagor out from the Legion side. So two support or Suicides, excuse me. One that can also function as a support, and then that Balfagor, who's really more of a pusher, Prisoner. on top of the bans on the Hellborn side. Devour, Behemoth, and Succubus, so Succubus could also be played as a suicide, could be a support. Behemoth, almost always a support, and Devour, that mid-initiate player, that obviously would fit this Legion time, but they decide actually pretty well, and they, they do go with the Prisoner on top of that, so they were clearly thinking Hook, and they got themselves a Hook. Prisoner, a strong pick, no doubt, and will do a good job of initiating with this team. So the Legion's lines are Lineups are pretty obvious, I would say. Rush Hag and me, the Suicide Lane, Prisoner in the mid with Glacius, Empath, and Sandwraith on the bottom, and those are pretty strong lanes. Prisoner obviously hooking people into the Glacius Freeze, or as a result of the Glacius Freeze, and that's a, quite a lot of damage that they'll be able to put on whoever plays mid on the Hellborn side. And Empath, one of the better babysitters in the scene right now, I think, uh, not just because she is so strong as a defensive support, preventing your short laner from getting killed, but she's also going to be able to do quite a bit offensively, and she's got such good harass damage for whatever hero ends up playing the suicide role. And on the Hellborn, they have a couple options for that. Kraken, and then Magmus as well, their fourth pick. Arachna gets picked up with the last selection, so I kind of wonder how they're going to do this. Um, Arachna feels like a short laner in this game, but whether they would want to dual lane her Let's seems a little on. interesting. Uh, it seems like Arachna Rhapsody would be the best option, but... Okay, I figured it. It's going to be Arachna Rhapsody top, Magmus Nymphora middle, and Kraken Suicide, I'm guessing. Um, obviously, it could be a number of things, but it seems unlikely it's going to be anything other than that. Just because that seems to be the most optimal situation that they could come up with. Um, Arachna and Rhapsody... Sorry, uh, Arachna and Nymphora don't feel like they'd fit together too well, just because Nymphora's pod is fine, but it's not going to help her too much. I mean, it's like, like Arachna's going to have consistent massive uh, health issues, also doesn't really need the mana too much, and the stun isn't reliable enough to help her out as, as much as you might like. Um, as a result, I would expect the Rhapsody. The problem is that the Rhapsody works way better with Kraken than it does with the Nymphora does. Um, obviously, the difficulty there is... Haha, <laughs> auto-skip pause. Replays, bitch. They're awesome. Um, more pauses. Don't even care. Don't even care. Don't even care. Pause all you want. I don't even care. Anyway. Um, so that's what sort of... No, it looks like Kraken's going middle. I think they're going to have some issues with this if they do it. First of all, I'm not a huge fan of Magnus Suicide. I don't think he does too, too well. Uh, Kraken obviously is substantially tankier, and I think the hit away for him is a little bit better. He can use the charge a couple of times. Magnus just does not have the mana pool to be able to spam that, and he really needs Steam Bath to be able to stay, al stay alive as well. On the other hand, this could be... Oh, this is a 2-1-2. Is that what they're doing here? So, okay, I like the Nymphora and Magnus lane. That seems much, much better to me. As a long lane, not a huge fan. The advantage, of course, they're going to have is Sand Wraith here as a melee hero. So uh, Magmus may not have as many issues last hitting as he would against a short lane range, but I'm still not feeling this really. Empath is probably going to be able to do a better job of harassing than this Nymphora will. A little bit better in the base damage, and obviously that Essence Link helping out a fair bit. Um, but the Legion's line, line, lanes excuse me, are, like I said, quite predictable. We're going to have up top here Ratchet Hag in the Suicide Lane going up against the Rhapsody Arachna. In the middle, it will be Prisoner 945 and Glacius instead going up against the Solo Kraken. I really would prefer the dual lane here. Kraken should be mostly okay because his charge will get him out of trouble, but they could do quite well with the dual stun of a Magmus Nymphora here. Um, they could get you know, a fair number of kills on that Glacius if he steps forward, becomes an issue, and obviously Magmus with the Lava Surge away could get out of those hooks. But that's not what's going to happen. Instead, it will be bottom. And there goes the Essence Link on an Amphora, and that's why um, Empath is going to win this fight. And then all of a sudden, Magmus is going to have some issues, because Empath can say, Haha, guess what? I've kicked your support out of the lane. He can't harass me, and now I'm going to do the same to you. And meanwhile, Sandwraith gets all the free farm in the world. Now, a similar thing would happen if you put the Kraken bot, but you'd win mid. 
So he's like, all right, Kraken's not going to get too much, but at least we can get rid of that mid lane as the Lava Surge down there goes on to Empath. They're going to try to do something here, but Nymphora's in a lot of trouble. A couple more auto attacks and she's dead. That's going to be a bloodlust. Nope, there's the pot. There it is. And they're going to try to chase down this Empath. That's not going to happen. She eats her way through the trees. Well played there. And the health pot's still going off. Magma's now going to be able to get away, so he should be okay with like I said, I'm not a, not a huge fan of this. And, and the Empath is basically showing why this is a way better lane for the Legion than it is for the Hellborn. Even if you put the Magma Suicide down here, at least you'd, you'd do better in middle. Because, I mean, right now it's... Oh, look. Actually, holy crap, Prisoner... No, Glacius die, excuse me. Let's go back. Oops. Power diving. Bad idea. See, once again, their advantage of replay is I can be a terrible cameraman and miss kills and then go back and catch them anyway. Good stuff. Let's see if see if anybody actually is watching. I'm, I'm curious. Nope, nobody's watching. I had somebody was watching earlier when I was testing, and I feel bad for that person because it was terrible. Meanwhile, I'm missing all sorts of shit that's happening. Um, as down goes Magnus and Empath apparently died as well, and I'm not that interested in it. I'm sorry, this this cast is just not going to be as good because I'm streaming to Twitch for the first time, so I'm kind of focusing a lot on that, making sure it goes well. Anyway. Bottom lane continuing to go in favor of the Legion team. Sandwraith here at 2 0 0, 400 gold per minute, 7 and 5, compared to Magnus at 2 0, 155 GPM, and Empath at 150 him herself. So, really, the support here for the Legion side is doing as well as the farmer. And Nymphora obviously having a struggle time at 98 GPM. So, Sandwraith, a hero that needs a lot of farm, and the, the Legion did go for a really greedy lineup. That's, that's a worth to pointing out. I mean, Wretched Hag up here is actually having a pretty solid time at 177 gold per minute compared to 190 for Arachna, which is just really awful. There's no, I don't know why Rhapsody is having such an issue boxing out this hag, but that shouldn't even be close to what's happening up here. So Legion obviously taking a pretty substantial advantage so far early in this game. Mono made me while Nymphora not quite gonna die. As Glace just came in for the gank, not successful. Health potion gets dropped. Sandrake will be picking that up along with a tree. <laughs> if Empath is not Empath move. So they tried to dive there, didn't work out, but. Not a huge deal, and now all of a sudden there's tri laning, so I wonder if this will continue. And I guess it might as well. Middle lane, they got Prisoner a pretty decent uh, advantage here. 277 gold per minute has his bottle, compared to Kraken at the 260 gold per minute math mark. So, and once again, I'm missing all sorts of shit. Wall goes down, that's going to be a kill on Nymphor, but Empath is going to pay for it herself. So... Trading one for one there, not really advantageous for the Legion side in the tri lane versus dual lane situation. Especially because they were already winning the lane, so at this point a trade is not favorable. So, we'll see what continues to happen. Glacier's going to head back middle as he's feeling like, hey, I might as well keep boxing out this Kraken, who is DD'd. Invis Prisoner is only level 5, so not going to be able to use that ultimate or anything. Could have tried it for the hook, obviously charge is available for Kraken though, so likely would not have resulted in the kill. And Prisoner does have Shackle, yes, that's true, but uh, it's going to depend on reactions. I'm kind of surprised they haven't done more to harass him, to be honest. Looking at the stats here, 25 and 2 for a Prisoner, compared to 15 and 1 for Kraken, so Kraken not doing horribly, but no surprise he's not winning this lane. Hag chasing some people down up here. And she is currently at 11 and 4 to compared to Spider's 20 and 8, so Arachna is starting to pull a little bit ahead here, which is expected. But Hag by no means is doing badly in this top lane. And really it's going to come down to other stuff. Meanwhile, bottom lane, all sorts of stuff happening. There's the steam bath, not going to be enough for a Magmus to keep him alive. Nymphora is going to get dope here. Drops a pod, will be able to heal herself. Sandwraith is really diving this. There's a the wall, that's going to help out. And there's the last hit, but Sandwraith's going to pay for this. Yep, there it is. So, he gets a double tap, dies, 
probably not the worst thing, especially because nobody got the experience for that kill, and it went to Magnus, actually. So that's not quite as good. Rather have that in Amphora. Up top, Glacius is heading up here, really doing a lot of roaming more than anything else, a little surprising. I guess figuring that they have the 1v1 mid, might as well run around and see what I can do. Release the Kraken gets dropped in, but along to Prisoner 9 for 5 we'll see if we can get out of this, it's pretty easy. Tries to hook something, there's a Prison Break, here comes Magnus, Sandrake Ultimate getting him in there, will be able to kill Kraken, but so does Prisoner, and Magnus will be able to sit in his little steam bath and survive. I guess Sandray can take the farm here. Does not have a port, so we'll take some time to go back down to bottom lane if he chooses to do so. Up top, meanwhile, missing everything. Arachna's gonna get frozen down here. Will be jumped on. There's the sonar scream, and one more auto attack will finish her off. Dance floor goes down. Looking to put some more harassment on Rhapsody. Not gonna be a kill, but might as well throw some auto attacks if you can. Port coming up top lane. Presumably that's Kraken. And. Let's see if they're going to try and turn this around. Obviously no ultimate. Jesus Christ. And for a bottom lane, going to die to Empath. That's really impressive. Anyway, top lane. They're clearly trying to set something up here. And there's the Scotta stuns on top of the tip. Nice blink, though. And down goes the Ice Imprisonment. Nothing going to happen there. Obviously, without the release of Kraken, really difficult to catch out that Hag. Scotta stuns helping out a lot, but not nearly enough lockdown to prevent the blink. And Hag will survive. Uh, use her bottle to heal right back up. Perhaps come back in here. Charge is available for Kraken. Backblast hits though, and Kraken just went absolutely the wrong way. Did not figure that Hag would be that back that quickly. So not a great play there from the Hellborn side. Illusion gets picked up here by Magmus. We'll see where he chooses to go. Sandwraith, I said it back. Bot prisoner is once again middle. And we're looking at a pretty substantial gold and experience lead here for the Legion side. Nine to five. Rhapsody and Prisoner are going to meet each other. Prisoner should be able to defeat this. Like, like, you're dead. So I don't understand why that took longer. Let's have a second but Easy kill there. In the meantime, though, could be a little trouble. Gets charged into the cliff. We'll see where he can go. Release the Kraken, not available. Actually, sorry, it is. But there goes the Eruption. Not doing too much. Doesn't matter. The Lava Surge will fill off, finish off Prisoner. So ends up being a bad trade for the Legion as Prisoner loses his life for Rhapsody's in their hand. It took two ultimates to do that kill. Hag, Empath, and Glacius will all be heading middle, see if they can pick up a counter kill. Probably won't be able to. Backblast is still down for 60 seconds, and Empath and Glacius just not going to provide enough utility between the two of them. Illusion's obviously making things difficult, realizing that's a fake. There goes a Thunder Blast, and for you're screwed, buddy. Wall comes out, going to try to stop Kraken from doing too much. Ice Imprisonment on top as well. There goes the ultimate. Pretty nice placement, but an excellent charge back. That's going to be a kill on Glacius. They do get the kill on Kraken. Sandrith coming in here for the Magmus, and that's going to be the last hit as well. Steam Bath not going to save him. Port coming in. Not a good idea. Here's the hook. Yeah, it's a cancel. So... Obviously recognizing that was going to be a poor choice. And... Canceling the TP as well as the second TP, so this tower is not in a lot of trouble because we have two P TPs down and two heroes dead. So that's going to be a lot of damage here on this middle tower. Prisoner can pop a creep wave and do whatever he can to prevent it from coming in. Glyph obviously helping out a little bit in terms of the defense. Sonar Scream and Hook will clean stuff up. Wall goes down on top of the stun. There's Scottos as well on Empath. There goes the curse and easy kill onto Rhapsody. Kraken now in a lot of trouble. Get the prison break on top of him. Gonna be a pullback in. Easy kill. Ball and Chain doesn't hit anything. But Nymphora and a Porter are gonna come in here. Magmus is here as well. This is gonna be a dead man tower. Let's see if they do anything else with it. Not going to. So 15 7 hero kills up to the Legion side, and their greed's paying off. Hag did very, very well top lane, 360 gold per minute. Just did not get shut down nearly as hard as she should have by that Rhapsody, who's typically a very strong babysitter, but for some reason just was not able to kick Hag out of lane as early as she should have been able to. The Dexter up on top on the Arachna has really just not left this lane. 222 gold per minute. Um, obviously the death not helping, but really, with, with what should have been total free farm, a very, very low GPM score. Hook coming from here on Magnus, who just did not even try to sidestep it, on top of Shackle. Backblast hits three. That's going to be easy kill on him for it, and Magnus. 
So at least the Kraken gets dropped onto two, and Kraken's still in a lot of trouble. Empath is inside Hag, and she has a DD room, but there's a spider on top of her. She's gonna go down. Empath jumps right back out. We'll see if her Akna can get out of this. Rapsi's trying to save her and do anything she can. Glacius actually one more attack. That's not gonna be Thunder Blast goes on to finish her. But the last auto attack from her Akna finishes off Glacius, and that's gonna be nearly enough. Hook back not gonna happen, so Spider will live, but actually gets a double tap. But pretty much the rest of her entire team died. Hag bought back for some reason. I guess figuring she wants to keep the GPM up, which is not a terrible tactic, but really a buyback this early in the game. When you're as far ahead as you are, probably not necessary. And with the two buyback token, I'm a little more conservative than a lot of players, but... No doubt we've seen early buybacks prove useful in many, many games, so I'm not a huge opponent of that decision especially if it continues to keep her farm where it needs to be. And obviously look at the GPM charts here. Sandraith way ahead of everybody. Arachna right, just right behind her. And uh, as I said during the drafting phase, this is a really greedy lineup. You know, these are two heroes in Hag and Sandraith that require and soak up a lot of farm. And they're making it work here. It's not easy, but when you have 19 hero kills in 11 minutes, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of cold that's going to come your way that is not related to stacking or efficiently farming waves or anything like that, so... Obviously very useful in that regard. Hagony collapsed on here by four heroes. She's in so much trouble. We'll blink onto Kraken here, but that's not going to end too well for her. Ice Imprisonment goes down. Nice ultimate from uh, Glacius will do a ton of damage. Spider or Sandraith are going to come back in here. Glacius does fall, but so does Kraken. Stack Steam Mouth can be setting in here for Magma. Dies to the wall. Spider trying to run away. It's not going to happen. Tries to get a few kill by Neutral Creeps. Not going to work either. Now Rapsi's in a ton of trouble. Staccato Stones are down onto Sandraith. Not going to make a difference. Curse kills her. And the only hero left is Nymphora. So, once again, the Legion side basically wipes the Hellborn. And that's, you know, three or four engagements now where they've solidly come out ahead. Losing only Glacius in that fight, obviously. That's a that's a fight they'll take. Including Glacius is a 223 gold per minute empath at 310. That's impressive. 3, 2, and 14. Always fun. Three main gang squad here in the Hellborn Woods. They're right on top of a ward of sight, though, so the Hellborn know exactly where they are. And they should know that these wards are down. Empath jumping inside prisoner. We'll see if this turns anything. Pork comes back here. Yeah, they know exactly what's happening. Magnus gets pulled back in. We're going to see if they do anything. Kraken ultimate goes down, but there's a prison break as well. Magnus not going to drop. Yep, there he is, the Bat Blast. Empath going to jump out of Prisoner at this point. Going to try to get away. Ice Imprisonment there will finish off Kraken. Spider puts the Spider Sting down onto Hag. They're going to try to kill it. And that's going to do quite a lot to help out that wretched Hag. And for running away, Ice Imprisonment on top of her, though. And she's going to be totally screwed. Jump back in from Hag. Hook not going to hit under Rhapsody. And Wall will help finish off Spider. So. Once again, one hero left. And this time it's the Rhapsody. So supports are living a little bit more. But... Uh, <laughs> Obviously, that's not super helpful. And it looks like Legion Seam is, is just massively in control of this game. There's there's no real reason to think that, you know, it's going to be anything other than a pretty much a total stomp. Wall going out once again. Rhapsody now dead. Lava Surge from Magmus. No. No mana on Hag, so she can't blink, but it's not going to matter. Face Boots coming back in, but exactly, you know, they, they know there's a war here, so... Legion side not feeling like taking this fight anymore, and they're just going to get out. Courier is going to get spotted here by Kraken. Empath and Kraken going to go at it a little bit. Wall goes down. Well placed, and that'll be the end of that. Spider looking for something, not going to find it. So looking at GPM charts here, yeah, that's not good. When the entirety of your team is above the entirety of the opposing team, there's a Codex on Sandra, so we don't even care anymore. <laughs> I would imagine that in 30 seconds this game is going to be CC. But we'll see if that actually happens. Five men? Okay, four. I think prisoners are down. So. Anyway, up top, easy jump here. On top of Spider and Kraken, Magmus, everybody's dead, pretty much. is the first to drop. Magmus is going to be, sorry, Kraken's going to be next. Magmus gets the ultimate off. Not going to really hit anything with it, though, except for Glacius. And he's going to try to run away now. It's not going to happen. And is getting chased down by Sandrace. She'll oh die next, God. right at the same time as Magmus. And that's a four for nothing. And there's the CC. So, 
just a dominant performance here from the Legion side, obviously outclassing their opponents. Their draft was substantially better. There's no, there's really no getting around that. But uh, this game was one of the laning phase. I mean, the lanes from Hellborn were just really odd. I don't understand why they did it the way they did, but whatever, they felt it was right. And that's going to be it for this game and for this edition of the stream for a second. I'll be back in a bit with uh, some other matches probably, and doesn't matter because nobody's watching. Maybe they'll watch it.